Hi everyone, what is up? My name is Haley. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you did not know, now you do. Hey you guys, what's up? So y'all, hello, aus America, aus Florida. Um, I don't even know what to say you guys or how to name this video. I think it's just gonna be an update and talking about why I came to Florida, what it's like in Florida, um, what I have missed, what I have not missed, what is really shocking me here, and basically just to give people an update of the United States. A few people sent me messages asking what it was like traveling to the United States, so I'm gonna touch on that very briefly. And it was actually very clear in the comment section that a lot of people were confused as to why I came to the United States and I'm gonna be talking about that as well so um, I have more videos planned you guys a lot of y'all have been saying you want to go to the beach you want to see the beach um, I will be doing that no worries <laughs> um, I'm just you know trying to get myself settled it's been like non-stop action for me the last couple of days and I haven't had time to really do anything pertaining to YouTube so yeah, I'm now catching up on everything. So anywho, with all that being said, let's get right into the video. So let's start off with why I came to Florida because a lot of people were making or having assumptions as to why I was in Florida. And the main reason was because my mom was supposed to come to Germany in like, I don't know, Jan the end of January, let's say. And she was supposed to stay for, I think like almost two weeks. I don't recall the exact date, but basically for two weeks. And it was going to be for her birthday. But then Germany changed the rules that you have to be Gebustad. I mean, they didn't really change the rules because you did have to be Gebustad, but you know, it just became a little too chaotic and hectic. And my mom's booster wasn't due until a month, or I think it was like, yeah, a month after she would be in Germany, if that makes sense. So she really wouldn't be able to do that much without having to take a test, and she did not want to take a test, which everyone's choice, you know? You have the choice to do something fun with a test or not do it without a test. My mom was like, well, I don't want to take a test, and she didn't want to sit in a foreign country in Mike and I's apartment, <laughs> which has not a lot of space for extra people. And so I thought to myself, it'd be the perfect time to just swoop in and see my family and get out of the winter in Germany. Not to say that the winter was horrible because it hasn't been the worst winter that I've experienced in Germany, but getting out of the snow, I mean, there's not really an excuse for <laughs> me wanting to do that. And so yeah, I found a flight with TAP Portugal. I love this airline, you guys. A lot of people say they don't like it because it's a budget airline, but I prefer them. I've never had issues with them. Unfortunately though, they don't have as many legs or flights as they used to, you know, pre-COVID or even in the beginning of COVID. And so I had to choose a really, how do you say, not ideal <laughs> flight schedule or flight situation. And also because I booked my ticket, I think a week before I left, there were very minimal options for me. So I found a ticket, I think I paid 290 round trip, euro, no, dollars, not euros, <laughs> round trip for my flight for three weeks to Florida. And so I ended up here, surprised my mom for her birthday. A lot of people asked me um, what I got her. I got her myself. I am the gift, you guys. <laughs> and yeah, I've just been here chilling, having a lot of fun, enjoying the beautiful weather it's relatively cool right now I went to the beach I want to say um, a few days ago I went to the beach once and I didn't really get into the water <laughs> it was way too cold in the water for me I thought I was like German in that sense but no it erased as soon as I put my big toe in the water I was like oh hell no but it was so funny because I was walking and I heard people in the water speaking and they were German and they were the only people in the water and I had to laugh so hard a lot of people were asking what it's like in the United States right now um, I can only talk about Florida that's where I'm at you guys in every state it's a little different I mean the United States is rel relatively I would say liberal when it comes to you know covid precautions when you're comparing it to let's say germany or the european union as a whole but florida especially i feel like is even magnified and no not magnified everything is just more open here sort of going a little off topic from this point a lot of people were asking me what it was like flying to the united states now i can only compare it to the last time i flew which was in april slash may of last year and it was a little bit more lenient this time but more confusing I'll try to explain it the best of my abilities and this is also from my personal experience of flying from Germany to Portugal to the United States every country has different rules so if you are using the same route um, this might help you and also if you're just someone 
that is curious of what it's like flying into the United States right now, this might be interesting for you as well. We had to fill out a form. It was five pages. It, the four of the five were unnecessary for me or not relevant for my situation. I just needed one. And I don't know why they made it so confusing and made people fill out these or print out these long forms when we only needed one or two of the pages max. But you had to basically declare yourself that you were vaccinated and that you tested negative, I think, or that you had a negative test. And then once you had those things, you were able to go into the United States and that you were signed in a way that you would follow. I think it was the CDC recommendations for quarantining, you know, testing positive symptoms and all that good stuff. And so that was like an extra layer of complication, but it was a lot easier, if that makes sense. Like it was a little bit complicated, but it wasn't difficult compared to the last time I flew, which was really, how do you say, anstrengend. and it was really hard and confusing. And there were so many, how do you say, hoops and things that you had to jump through. And also the testing this time, in my opinion, was a lot more, how do you say, efficient and lenient. They have a lot more options for tests that they accept now. And also with the apps, whether it be the Corona Vaughn app, if you are in Germany, I don't know if it's in other countries as well, or the Cove Pass app, it's also accepted, you know, everywhere, I think in the European Union, and they accepted it in the United States for me as well, which made the whole process for me very streamlined. And as long as you had, you know, a vaccination, fully vaccinated, you had a negative test, and like I said, if you wanted to throw in a booster, you don't really need to have a booster to fly into the United States, then you really shouldn't have any issues getting to the United States. And then once you are here, dependent on which state you are in, you are either going to have minimal <laughs> COVID rules or maximum COVID rules. In Florida, you guys, there, there are no rules. Um, there is nothing here. It is a free country. Oh my gosh. For me, a lot of people have been asking me to talk about, you know, the mask, the non-mask and all that good stuff. So it's sort of like a free for all here. Like some places require mask. I went to Apple the other day, masks were required to go into the store. I went to Starbucks, Starbucks, they are recommended. And then in other places like certain grocery stores, they say, we don't care. And I went into a store the other day and it's like, it's a free country, you can choose. They literally had a sign that said this. I was gonna take a picture of it, but I forgot to. So it's honestly a free for all when it comes to mask wearing. I think it's recommended though by the CDC that if you are fully vaccinated, you don't have to, or you shouldn't have to wear mask, but no one checks it here. No one's scanning your Cove pass. No one's scanning your QR code. No one's asking you for a booster card or your CDC card or anything like that. It's just like, these are the rules, but no one's really following them. And Florida itself is just like, you know, the crazy state of the United States. So people are just even doing like a lot extra more of not following the rules. When I first got into the United States, uh, in the airport, it is mandatory and required in Miami International Airport that you have to wear masks. And then when I got to, let's say a gas station, I stopped to use the restroom and I went to buy myself a water. And I, the guy asked me a question and I answered him and he's like, I don't understand you. And I had a mask on and I like tried to speak up louder. And he's like, I don't understand you. Just take off the mask. I don't know why you're wearing it. And it's like, that's how some people react to mask here. Um, I've heard people say rude comments, like one lady, she said something to me at Starbucks, like, why are you wearing a mask and stuff like that? And I'm just like, there are people that will always give their tsimtatsu here. But there are a lot of people that still wear masks. There are a lot of people that still, you know, follow the recommended, how do you say, guidelines. So it's not like every single person, let's say in the United States and let's say Florida is, you know, one particular way, but I do think the majority is, you know, no mask, no care in the world, everything's open. All in all, it is a complete culture shock for me. You guys, like I said, coming from Germany, it has been a complete culture shock, aside from the weather, which there's nothing that Germany can do about the weather, you know, where it's located geographically on a map. Germany can't do anything about that. That was one of the biggest culture shocks was just getting off the plane and it being warm, you know, hot, having to take off my jacket, having to take off like my sweater and just wearing a tank top because it was so warm. And what else is there? You know, culture shocks that there are a lot of shortages here compared to Germany. I do have to say, a lot of people say that there are no shortages in the United States, but that is not true. There are a lot of shortages here when it comes to specific food items. Like, I mean, Americans are very spoiled, you know? So if there's 
let's say cream cheese is in a shortage, then people are up in arms that they can't buy cream cheese when they could just, you know, substitute it for something else or just go a week without cream cheese, try to eat something else. But no, everyone's up in arms. You know, there's sometimes, you know, toilet paper shortages still here. And also everything is very expensive in the United States right now, which I remember it being expensive already, but everything is like, more expensive now. I feel like that's the same in Germany too, but grocery shopping here is a lot of money. Like it was already a lot of money and now it's like even more. I went to the grocery store the other day and what did I wanna buy? Um, like a thing of milk. You know, what usually costs me, I think if I buy the cheap brand, it's 69 cents. And if I buy the expensive brand, it's a one euro 69 cents in Germany for a carton of milk. That same size milk in the United States is about $5. So it wasn't $5 when I left. I know that 1000% that it was not the same. It was not that price when I left. And also gas here. When Mike and I left Florida, so like in July-ish of 2020 or 2021, I don't remember, 2020, gas was maybe around $2, $2 and some change. It is now almost $4. And that is one of the biggest differences for me. Everything has a little heftier of a price tag here. So that's one of the biggest culture shocks for me as well. Going to restaurants, a lot of restaurants have risen, 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 oh my gosh, raised their prices, um, which is expected. It's also been almost a year since I've been here, but some things have been, how do you say, drastically increase over a year's time. So yeah, um, that was my update right now about what it's like for me coming to the United States, being in Florida, and all of you know the process of getting here, what it was like. I hope it helped you. I will be uploading more videos, you guys. Like I said, I just had to get settled in now that everything's simmered down and that I've been here for a while, you know, I'm nestled in, I can go focus on making videos here and all that good stuff. So yeah, thank you so much for watching, you guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'm sending you a whole bunch of sunshine, even though it's really cold in Florida right now. Cold for Florida's fitness. So yeah, thank you so much for watching, you guys. I love y'all and bye.